Is Antarctica hiding a secret that is turning our worldview upside down? It is rumored in certain circles that a small group of filthy rich billionaires are running a hidden research project that makes us question our common sense. And for a very simple reason, there are things slumbering at the South Pole that are so disturbing that they must be concealed from the public at all costs. But what is the truth behind these crude claims? What is the story behind the strange missions that have already been completed in Antarctica? And which simply make no sense when viewed from the outside? Why did a pilot claim to have experienced something in this bitterly cold extreme world that we only know from a Jules Verne classic novel? And above all, could it be that humans are not the only intelligent creatures to have set foot in the eternal ice? Antarctica is not only at the center of scientific research interest, but also in the crosshairs of some, well, let's say somewhat, alternative theories. Officially, the presence of humans at the South Pole is justified by the huge knowledge potential inherent in this frozen world. For example, scientists here extract meter-long ice cores that provide a deep insight into Antarctica's climactic past, and at the same time, allow future climate scenarios to be modeled more accurately. But life is also a wise teacher for the scientists in the largest ice desert on Earth. A few years ago, the researchers discovered sedentary organisms at a depth of 900 meters, and thus something that was previously considered absolutely impossible. Things became a little less official, however, when we look at the adventurous stories and rumors that surround the eternal ice beyond, from artificially created pyramids to hidden gateways leading straight into the hollow Earth to extraterrestrial bases, Antarctica is suspected of hiding a shocking secret in many ways. But let's just assume at this point that all of these controversial theories ultimately have an element of truth to them. Who then actually knows the truth, and who has direct access to those secrets? Well, to understand this, we need to take a brief detour into the realm of statistics. At the end of 2022, 1.1% of the world's population owned just under 46% of global wealth. And true to the motto, money rules the Antarctic world, it is said to be a select circle of filthy rich billionaires who control the destinies in the midst of endless ice landscapes and colossal glaciers. Unfortunately, a quick glance at our bank balance quickly dashes our hopes of being accepted into this select circle. Instead, we should look for other ways to get to the bottom of the frosty truth. And indeed, after just a little research, it is clear that things have been happening in Antarctica that leave more than just the die-hard skeptics with raised eyebrows. Was this army of aliens beaten back? It all began quite unspectacularly. In December 1946, the U.S. Navy decided to send a fleet of almost 5,000 soldiers and numerous ships to Antarctica. Officially, the aim of Operation High Jump was to study the south of the continent and the surrounding waters more closely than ever before. However, it was also intended to put the suitability of the American equipment through its paces under the extreme conditions of the perpetual ice. All in all, the mission was no less than the largest military operation in this part of Antarctica and one of the largest research expeditions at the South Pole ever. As part of this, the participants took almost 70,000 aerial photographs, on the basis of which new maps were created. In the end, however, Operation High Jump was called off prematurely due to deteriorating weather conditions and concerns about ever greater damage to equipment. However, not everyone is satisfied with this official explanation. After all, it has always been rumored on the quiet that the aborted mission was actually more like a panicked flight. In detail, the Navy is said to have been involved in a fierce battle that it simply could not win. But who, or what, could have forced the U.S. soldiers to retreat in the first place? Well, that depends on which alternative camp you ask. For some, it is certain that it was Hitler's Nazi henchmen who crushed the Antarctic offensive. According to this, the cruel dictator is not said to have put a bullet in his head of the Führerbunker in Berlin, but rather to have secretly escaped to Antarctica in the turmoil of the end of the war. And if you now believe that it can't get any wackier than this, you should now listen particularly carefully, 
because the other camp is convinced that Operation High Jump was nothing more than a war of the worlds in which our species ultimately got the short end of the stick. In other words, the US Navy woke up a sleeping extraterrestrial giant at the South Pole that was probably not particularly keen on human visitors. At this point, however, a fundamental question arises. How on earth does one even come up with such an idea? Is there any evidence that makes this assumption more than just adventurous speculation? Well, not exactly. And yet the further course of the Army-supported research mission at least makes you sit up and take notice. Despite all the intergalactic battles, Operation High Jump 2 had long since been in the starting blocks in 1950. Everything was ready, the crews were just waiting for the order to set sail, and then received the unexpected news that the venture would be abruptly cancelled. A few weeks before the scheduled launch, those responsible realized that the mission was actually far too expensive. Unofficially, they realized that the risk of another defeat on the battlefield was just too great. Do these impossible maps lead to a shocking truth? However, Edward Bransfield did not face the risk of a historic defeat in 1820. On the contrary, when Bransfield became the first person to ever set eyes on the Antarctic Peninsula, he achieved a historic victory. Well, that's certainly true if we follow conventional historiography. But men like Graham Hancock prefer to follow somewhat more unorthodox approaches that don't appear in any dusty textbooks. Basically, the British writer and alternative researcher argues that an advanced, high-tech culture existed long before our time, but was ultimately erased from our collective historical memory. No wonder. After all, the civilization in question was completely destroyed by a catastrophic flood at the end of the last ice age. Well, at least almost. According to Hancock, a few people managed to survive the apocalypse and then spread their higher knowledge to the rest of the world. But this also raises the question of historical evidence. Evidence that, according to Hancock, exists in abundance, provided we understand how to recognize and interpret it correctly. On the one hand, there are the striking traditions of our ancestors. For although the ancient cultures never officially met directly, they all knew one and the same story of an all-devouring world flood that brought forth higher beings. The parallels between the pyramid structures scattered across the globe should also support the theory of a precursor civilization, as should the maps showing Antarctica several centuries before its official first discovery. And that documents such as the Piri Reis map, the records of Orance Fine, and the Walsimuller world map do indeed show ominous southern land masses that are strikingly reminiscent of Antarctica is probably beyond question. However, these inconsistencies put down on paper also seem to have a huge catch. They were only drawn up in the 16th century. So how can records from the early modern period be linked to a people who perished at the end of the last ice age, 11,700 years ago? Well, quite simply, according to Hancock, the confusing Antarctic maps are based on significantly older sources that, you guessed it, come directly from the ranks of the mysterious predecessor culture. Consequently, the later works scratch the surface of a historical truth that is far greater than we even dare to dream. But what actually happens once we leave that surface, and instead delve into the hidden world beneath Antarctica? Are Richard Bird's reports authentic? Well, then we are confronted with an enigmatic diary from which the alternative camp is only too happy to quote, but which never officially existed. But be that as it may, the man who was said to have written these earth-shattering lines went by the name of Richard Byrd. And of course, he was not just any man, but the same admiral who was in command of a certain Operation High Jump. As part of the mission, Byrd is said to have experienced something that made even the rendezvous with alien troops look like an enjoyable coffee party. During a routine research flight, Byrd's plane began to tumble violently. But instead of crashing to the ground, the pilot found himself in a kind of cave that revealed something incredible. A lush, green forest whose exotic plants and animals were very different from anything familiar. However, the inhabitants that Bird claims to have met in the Antarctic underground were also different from anything familiar. Fortunately, they did not immediately attack the newcomer, but instead invited him to marvel at the mystical realm of Agartha with his own eyes. 
In the end, the strikingly large creatures, surrounded by a blue-green glow, led Bird to their leader. In his later diary entry, the unexpected guest only referred to him reverently as the Master, and he also wrote down the urgent warning that the Master had given him. The subterranean people had repeatedly tried to make contact with the humans, but as the overworld people always reacted aggressively and destroyed the flying machines sent out, these efforts were discontinued. Instead, the Agarthar inhabitants began to observe humanity from the shadows, and they realized that our species had reached a critical tipping point. We were more willing to destroy our own home planet than to limit our power. The most important, and at the same time most ominous sentence of the ominous master was again as follows. I must tell you that a mighty and terrible wrath is coming. A mighty storm will sweep across the land and rage for a long time. With this unpleasant prediction in mind, Bird returned to the surface to immediately write down everything he had just experienced. A short time later, he found himself back at the Pentagon, where he described the unbelievable incident to the mighty men. However, he was then given strict orders to never speak about the encounter with the hidden civilization again, and as an obedient military officer, Bird did not disobey this order. As a result, the only evidence of Bird's journey into the fantastic underworld was the diary that was later discovered. Well, if it really existed, of course. But what undoubtedly exists is the subscribe button. Join our community now and never miss a new video again.